Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. My name is Dill. Today, we have a new review for a new movie that is Evil Dead Rise. And you know, this is my first dive into this franchise. And I have to say, I really enjoyed this uh, on a technical level, at least. The camera work, the sound, the makeup, the pace, it, it was all very well done, very up my alley. I believe breeze to this movie. Like, it was like 90 minutes, but it felt like 30. But Matt, I guess what is your relation to the Evil Dead franchise as a whole and your general thoughts on this new installment? I think it's crazy to hear that you haven't seen Evil Dead movies before because these are some of the first horror movies that I dove into. I'm not a horror guy, uh, and I know you like horror a lot more than I do. And when I was first looking at getting into a horror a little bit, Again, not very into horror, but Evil Dead was one of the first things that I did because it has a reputation for being goofy and very over the top. And I think that this film delivers on that. It's goofy. It's over the top. Uh, it does what Evil Dead does best, which is ridiculous amounts, buckets of blood uh, and a good sense of humor. But for me, I first watched the first Evil Dead movie in high school. I think I watched it on Halloween night one year, and I was amazed at not just how scary the movie was, but how funny it was. Uh, it has such a campy atmosphere. Sometimes you're wondering, is it meant to be funny here? And the answer is not always yes. Uh, sometimes it's hilarious, and it clearly does not mean to be that funny. And sometimes it does mean to be that funny. So the first movie is wonderful, because it's just got this low-budget glow to it, where it's just so charming. It is packed with charm. I love it. Watch that one. The second one... I like a little bit less because it knows how goofy the first one was. And the first one was goofy, sometimes unintentionally. The second one is trying to be goofy. The second one is, however, a lot of people's favorite movies in the franchise. And Army of Darkness, I also really love. It's the third movie in the franchise, and it goes full nuts. Uh, it goes into the past. It's set. Uh, it's a zombie movie set with medieval times where the main character of the first two movies is fighting with a chainsaw on his hand uh, alongside knights and uh, wizards in the past. This tr franchise is crazy. And so I guess my thoughts on the new installment is it does some things really, really well. It understands the goriness of these movies. It goes for the over-the-top feeling that these movies have always had. But that said, I think I'm a little bit lower on this than the other ones because it didn't really add anything new to the franchise, right? Like, the first one was a Cabin in the Woods movie. We've seen a billion of those. This was one of the first Cabin in the Woods movies. And I think that's a fun atmosphere. And then the second one did the same thing over. I like that a little bit less because it did the same thing over. But then you get a movie where they go into the distant past and they're fighting in medieval times alongside knights. They're in castles. They go into the depths of hell in that movie. I, to go t from that to a movie that's like set in a family's home, it's just not as fresh to me. I feel like I've seen a lot of this, but what it did well, it does really well. Yeah, I guess it all makes sense. I know there was a reboot or remake 10 or so years ago, but I also... There was. I haven't seen it. I, I've heard that one is the consensus usually bottoms here, but I heard that they used the most fake blood ever. So that is a very interesting angle for that movie. But one thing I really appreciate about the horror genre is how they're able to use their technical elements because sometimes you're a very small budget. Sometimes you're a very big budget. And there's a lot of different ways you can use your camera or use your props when you have a lot or not a lot of money. And I feel like this movie did a pretty good job at that. I heard the budget was like $15 million, so not the biggest, but also not like nothing um, I really like the camera work, as I mentioned before, that shot through the people was so fun and engaging every time they went back to it because you would like slightly like look left, look right, or look to the mother right outside. And it always like hit the right spot. I thought the sound work was great, especially with like the vinyl. Uh, I felt immersed. One thing with horror movies that's always important is the sound work because it can kind of take you out if like you're hearing completely fake stuff and it could be used for comedy or could be not work in this movie i felt like everything that we heard that we saw all really came together and i guess i would have to ask you is there a major tech element that you loved or that you weren't a big fan of 
It's always the makeup work in these movies. The Evil Dead movies, they use buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets of blood. They are not typical zombie movies. These are possession movies that also are zombie movies that also are just the most insane shit possible. And I love the creativity that went into the makeup design, even from that first scene where the uh, main character gets her scalp ripped off. It's just creative makeup work. How can we make the most disgusting things possible? This is always a shining spot in independent horror films, and this being a studio film, it has that kind of indie attitude towards the gore of it all. I, so I gotta give shout outs to that. In terms of the camera work, I wasn't as much of a fan of it, but I think it was more, it was less the camera work and more the lighting. Sometimes it looked way too commercial for me, uh, like a little bit too professionally lit at times. I wanted it to be a little bit scrappier. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. I, I I like the shot where it's like right below them, like pointing up as they're running. I think that is from the original Evil Deads as well, um, from clips I've seen online. But I thought that was a very cool use for the camera shot. But I, I get the point where it looked too well lit. But I guess at the end of the day, this still is a studio horror. It's Warner Brothers. Yeah. They had $15 million, so it's not like they're just using a it, tripod. It was made for streaming like too, right? Yeah. Like this was a movie that they initially made for streaming, and then it got such good reactions from test audiences that they put it in theaters. I mean, that speaks to the quality of this movie, I would say. Yeah. And another thing I think that is very quality of this is the acting from some people. It's not it's not great across the board with horror movies, but as we know, it can be amazing or it can be awful. And sometimes the awful stuff works, the amazing stuff doesn't. But I thought both the leading actresses of this movie deliver stellar performances, whether they're having to be reserved, scared, scary, intimidating, whatever it was. I thought they both kind of just knocked out of the park. I don't really have any comments about the acting in this. I thought that they were all good. There there was no one that really stood out for me. There was no one that stood out negatively either. Uh, I think that they just did the job. The acting in these movies is never the biggest thing on my mind. Uh, it's really just like, what is the filmmaker doing? Is there enough energy in this film? Uh, are they delivering on what the audience wants? And ultimately, I think that the actors are a tool in that. Uh, you know, they, And the actors in this, they service what the movie needs for its audience. Fair enough, fair enough. I like that. Um, so yeah, Evil Dead Rise, good movie. There's one thing that really didn't work for me. And I, I get that's probably the point of these type of characters because I also watched The Pope's Exorcist this week. And that had a tormented child that is taken over by a demon. But these demons feel like they're just saying random stuff that a 13-year-old boy who just learned to curse would say. Like They don't feel like they fit what the demon's supposed to say in that moment or what... I don't know it just it felt so out of left field because like without like saying the stuff like it was just like the most like not cringe but like the most basic curse words the most basic sexual suggestions or whatever and it just felt weird in that moment i think that's part of the point of the evil dead demons is that they're they're not meant to be that terrifying in that like what they're saying isn't necessarily the most menacing it's just vulgar uh because yeah like <sighs> They're... It's very hard to portray genuinely scary things to say to people uh, and to get into our head as an audience. It's very, very easy just to, you know, have someone cursing and just being wild and unpredictable and crazy. And when you do that, it is going to sound like a kid being edgy. And that's, again, kind of the charm of the Evil Dead franchise is that the demons are like little edge lords that, you know, they, they kind of seem like harmless little assholes, but then they'll like rip you from limb to limb if they get a hold of you. But they're going to taunt you from a distance. Like one of the most iconic... Uh, moments and shots from the original is that they lock one of the demons in uh, in in a cellar in the original and there's a chain that keeps the demon from getting out but as the movie goes on you constantly hear the demon open up the cellar door uh, that they're stuck in and just yell things at the people as other shit is happening around the room um, and it kind of just adds to the atmosphere of wildness and insanity and like everyone is losing their minds as well right you're not just physically possessed you're possessed by something that's just like again the spirit of like a little shithead edgelord Fair enough, fair enough. Like I said, I think that's the consensus with these type of characters because I saw another movie with someone possessed and they said the same type of stuff. So I was like, 
when I saw that movie, I was like, okay, maybe that's not as big yeah. of a criticism for Evil Dead that I thought it was. Regardless, so I really like this Oscar chances nothing, even though maybe makeup should be in the conversation, but we know that the Oscars don't take horror for real. We saw Crimes of the Future get shortlisted, but not nominated. Yeah, when we're talking about a movie like this, we're just talking about it because it's fun and we like Evil Dead and we want to talk about it. Uh, this is not the type of movie that gets Oscars, so let's not even entertain the idea right there. Um, it was just a fun movie. I would personally give this a light 7 out of 10. I would give it a light 8, strong 7. I'm trying to currently in the process of re-ranking or redoing how I do my ratings because I looked at my letterbox like aggregates and like everything falls between a six and a seven and i don't have like any nines so i'm trying to be like okay maybe some more eight should be nines and then move some sevens to eights and everything like that so i'm somewhere between there i really like this movie in the moment and probably won't think about it very long so maybe that moves it down to a seven but it was really enjoyable while i was sitting there yeah it is a very fun movie and we do recommend that you go and watch but until next time my name is matt my name is dill and this is fancy phone ball <laughs>